This episode of The Bill and Callie Show is brought to you by... For over 28 years, Creative Carpet and Flooring has provided not only one of the largest selections of carpet and flooring in the area, but also customer service that exceeds expectations. Featuring leading brands like Mohawk, Stanton, and Shaw, their friendly and knowledgeable staff is there to help you choose the products that are right for you and are available to help answer any questions along the way. Once you become a client, you'll get newsletters recognizing new customers, offering contests, sales, and special thank you incentives for referrals. Creative Carpet and Flooring, with locations in Mokina, Illinois and Highland, Indiana, a family-owned business providing great products and service to families like yours. Hello, You're, we're coming to you from the new Bill and Kelly Show Studio A at the Executive Suites 2 here in beautiful Hammond, Indiana, overlooking the 8094 Expressway. So, uh, welcome to the right show. Right at the Kennedy Exchange. Yeah. Right, right sure. near the Kennedy we know Exchange. exactly where. And uh, with us today, we have Jessica Castillo, who is a teacher at the Hammond Area Career Center. Jessica is here to talk about some unique programs that she teaches out of her class. So, welcome to, yes, and actually. Bye -bye. Welcome to this day. Is there going to be the, some of our first shows coming yes. out of the studio? Okay. So what do you think? I think this is awesome. Thanks. Uh, we, we like it. Is that view? It's beautiful. It yeah. It's beautiful. Lovely. Yes, it is. It's We're very fortunate to be here. But uh, welcome to our show. We're so happy that we're able to have you as one of our first guests in yes, this beautiful thank you. studio. I appreciate that. So, well, let's uh, talk about um, your classes. Okay, um, I teach at the Career Center. It's in downtown Hammond. It's um, over by the Civic Center. We are a dual, pro uh, dual credit program, so we partner with Vincennes and we give kids the opportunity to gain an associate's degree through Vincennes before they even walk out of high school. Um, this year, we so have jealous. degree or certification or something from Vincennes. Wow. So they I all get to sign. Day. They're doing an official signing day in March. It's in March. But it's an excellent opportunity for kids. It, it truly is, and I'm jealous because I wish I would have had something like this. Yeah, that's um, what we were just saying before we started recording, how I wish I could have done that. It's it's absolutely amazing, and, and these kids are so smart. They are so intelligent. Um, and you can tell they truly are invested in their education, which helps us teachers out a lot. Um, we have all kinds of different programs. Um, it, the kids get their uh, general courses and then they have the option of going into what we call CTE or career tech ed uh, classes which are criminal justice, uh, health sciences, computer science, um, and they have the opportunity to gain their associates kind of that route which is pretty neat. Um, Very neat. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to all the teachers that do all the awesome stuff in their career, uh, their career program kind of classes. I teach um, dual credit psychology, dual credit, uh, government, I teach world history, um, I've taught kind of everything. So um, my favorite so far has been world history and psychology because I get to kind of talk about what's happened in the world and kind of the science behind what everybody thinks. Awesome. So it's kind of neat. Yeah, and some of these unique programs you have out of your classroom that you've pretty much uh, blitten up some students that we've heard about um, are related to history. Yes. Um, one of the programs that I do in my classroom is called National History Day. Um, it's a program that the state of Indiana, the Historical Society, puts on every year. Students get together, they can create. It's kind of like a science fair, but for history. You can write a paper, you can do an exhibit, you can do um, a performance where you dance or you um, act it out. There's all different types of things. And I've had, for the last three years, I've had students make it all the way to state. Um, to either perform or to show off their presentations. And it's in, um, they have specific, what's the word? They have specific like topics. Like mm -hmm. last year was breaking barriers. And, and so they've had topics and you have to fit your um, presentation within that topic. And it's pretty neat because these kids just come out of nowhere with what they want or what they're interested in. And they have the ability to get scholarships. They have the ability to get money. Mm -hmm. They are public speaking. They're doing all the things that are necessary to kind of, in a sense, survive in college. Great. Wow. Um, that, 
Yeah, what an opportunity to have, and you know, in, in like an uh, urban area, mm -hmm. if you will, and uh, to, to have the ability to get your associate's degree mm -hmm. before you even get out of high school. Mm -hmm. well, that's oh, wow. so phenomenal. I keep track, I, I have a, a separate page on my Facebook that I keep for, um, for kids that have graduated, because I'm still close to a lot of them. I don't treat them as just students, they're my kids. Mm -hmm. So when they come in my classroom, I say I have 300 and something kids because that's just what it is to me. Um, but the ones that I talk to, they're still continuing their education. I have mm. one girl who, after she graduated, walked in almost a junior in, in college after the amount of credits. I have another kid who's down at Purdue um, in nursing. He got a direct admin to nursing. And I mean, these kids, they don't just end it here. They go mm. on and it's you fun. know they want to be something yeah. big. See, most of my teachers said by the time I was a senior in high school, I good luck. was a no. third grade education. <laughs> yeah, no. No. Good luck with that. <laughs> I can't <laughs> no, do that. Uh, no, no, but oh man, what a tremendous, so th this relationship you have with these students is they continue to be your kids, mm -hmm. your students, mm -hmm. beyond their uh, secondary career. Right. What an awesome, they awesome kids environment. That, that have been gone three years that still get a hold of me and say, hey, look at my grades, look at what I'm doing, look oh, at all this stuff. That's great. Stuff. Yeah, it's neat, it's yeah. neat. And I take that part of my job like really seriously. Yes, you do. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, these kids need somebody regardless. If you're a teacher or if you're a friend or whatever, they, they need somebody to go, hey, look at It's all always nice awesome to have somebody doing. in your corner who right. you know is back there right. really cheering you on. But I had that's teachers great. in my corner. I, went, I graduated from Morton in 2004. Mm -hmm. And I had teachers in my corner that, that backed me up and they took care of me and they treated me like I was one of their own. And that's where I realized, okay, you know what, if I'm going to be a teacher and I'm going to do this, I need to do the same. That's yeah. Right. And yeah, it's something that, uh, in, and we'll get to your programs in just a <laughs> bit, but we feel like we're cheerleaders here cheering for <laughs> teachers because yes. they need yeah. cheerleaders. Yes, they they really do. seriously do uh, because they get into it, not sh obviously for not the pay, because look what right, the pay exactly. is, right. but they get into it because they believe in teaching and they believe in our future. And, and, and doing those things. Oh my gosh, and so many kids that come in with problems, come in uh, because maybe their home life isn't great, mm -hmm. but yet they get an awesome teacher like yourself and things change for them. Yeah. All of a sudden they view hope in their future. Sure. They view, my gosh, I'm gonna get out of here with an associate's degree. Oh my gosh, this university just accepted me. I can possibly get a bachelor's degree and mm -hmm. I'm the first one in my family yeah. to get a bachelor's yeah. degree. Boy, I, hats off to you and, and your and profession. And all the teachers yeah. yes, who I do an amazing job. And, and a lot of our kids that come through the program, they are first generation. Mm. And they get to stand up in not their regular high school um, cap and gown. They get to stand in a Vincennes cap and gown. Oh, and they wow. get to say, How look at cool. what I've done, yes. look at what I've accomplished. Look at me, I got an associate's degree. Right? Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd be, be all over that. Yeah. That is so great. I, it uh, is. Uh, you know, that they then sends as partnered with uh, yeah. the school district to make this available. That's awesome. um, so let's get on to what you do in your classroom. Oh, I do because you've just... been recognized yeah. Yeah. for all these programs and things that you've yeah. initiated, and we love that. Um, and other places than the Bill and Kelly show. <laughs> That's so true. Yes, the Times. Um, <laughs> no, the um, Times. <laughs> nice <laughs> but, try. <laughs> The, um, I mean, I, I do a lot, and I try to create experiences. It's not just about teaching a lesson, it's creating experiences. So these kids can walk out and go, oh man, I really did learn something today. Or 10 years down the road, realize, oh man, she was right. Like, this is what life is, or this is what we do. Um, some of the stuff I do in my classroom, I, um, well, in world history, I'll pick out world history because that's the easiest one, because we do all kinds of things. Um, I have them at the end of the second semester. We, they do a project and it's been between um, genocides. So we, they do an exhibit and they have to use 500 words and pictures. And what they have to do is they have to describe um, a genocide. And um, you know, you have, there, there's many to choose from that most don't talk about. Um, and when these kids get into it, you can see how it affects them and how they how they feel about it and and you can tell that they they don't like it and they're not comfortable with it and sometimes we have to go out of our comfort zones to understand why these things shouldn't happen and so with those exhibits i mean these kids they present them 
they, again, they only have 500 words, so everything else has to be by mouth. Mm. And so they, you know, they engage in public speaking in my room, and it, I mean, it's, it's worked for the last couple years. These kids have really gotten a lot out of it. So uh, some of the things that, uh, the Holocaust, yes. and uh, then in Africa, some of the areas in the Africa Rwanda, where they're, Darfur. yes, where mm -hmm. uh, third world countries where they, tribes try to uh, eliminate another tribe, which is classified as genocide, and the brut absolute just brutality. Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of brings out an awareness, doesn't mm -hmm. it? A, another layer of awareness that Right. They view and they look back at what's going on in their own environment. And well, even governments in some countries, level. you know, right. come yeah. in and start wiping out people. Well, right. I mean, Hitler and, and, and the Jews, there were yeah. people who had mental uh, illness or people who had uh, physical mm -hmm. issues. They, they weren't the good ones, and let's right, get rid of right, them. Right. Yeah, and, and you were talking about a student who did something about in California yeah. during the gold rush. I mean, that's right here in our own country. Right. People don't think about that. No, no, they don't. I mean, and I, that's one of the lesser paid attention to things is the Native Americans and how the Native Americans were affected by the Europeans coming in. And she right. wrote an entire paper on the genocide of California Indians in um, during the gold rush era. And she literally, for National History Day, came two away from making it to nationals. And I mean, her paper was phenomenal. Um, but I didn't ask her to write that paper. I didn't tell her she had to write that paper. She chose that topic based mm -hmm. on that project that we had did in class her previous year. She was a sophomore, or I'm sorry, she was a junior when she wrote this paper. So now, what is, uh, what does some of their presentation involve? Do do you require them to use technology? Do you, you know, are the, what are your guidelines for them for we're, their presentation? We're a one-to-one -one school, so each kid gets a Chromebook, and each kid has the opportunity to create presentations like that. I like to go old school with this, and I make them, you know, do the exhibit boards. I buy the exhibit boards, and I give them to them, and I tell mm -hmm. them, you have to find your pictures, you have to figure out what words you're going to use, what quotations you're going to use, and how you're going to put it out. You need a thesis statement and everything. And so I go old school, but most of the time in my classroom, yeah, I do use technology. Yeah. Well, the other thing you have to be aware of that even though they do have a Chromebook, um, a lot of times maybe they don't have access to the internet at right, home and right. some other applications. So it's nice that you have that awareness to give them this meet, and they still get something out of it. Right. I mean, they still get the, you know, uh, uh, by putting it on a board is, you know, although. You know, I guess technology does play a role, mm -hmm. but you know, that, so that's amazing. So it's it's um, the poster board, and then they present that way. Mm -hmm. I assume they do a speech. And, yes, um, and I mean I've taken it real old school, and the library is like five minute walk down from us. So I've oh taken them gosh. all the way to the library, and I said, "Look, I want you to go through, and I want you to find a book that relates to your topic, and I want you to look through it and find something relevant for your exhibit." All the new librarians out there are just like cheering yes. right now. Yes. Right. The teacher it's that called the Dewey yeah. Decimal System. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we had to do it. We had to do it. Sure. We had to yeah. go to the library and we had to research. And maybe one day there won't be that opportunity. They may not have a computer in front of them, and they have to go. Oh my God, what do I do? Now? Yeah. How, how do I find you it know? out? It's like there's no Google. Yeah. What happens yeah. next? Yeah. 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 Well, the media center brings in a whole new layer to your classroom because. Yeah you all of a sudden have someone, if they have question about citing a reference mm -hmm. and validating that reference, which students always, you know, if you talk to any librarian, they're, they're absolute sticklers about this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, getting them into that media center or library is, is a valid resource. Yeah, sure. So, uh, that's mm -hmm. great. Uh, so, uh, talk about some of these projects. Like, can you give examples? I had one student do the, um, genocide in Asia and it's one that's not really talked about um, he went above and beyond he, he absolutely loved history so it was right in his you know his path he was he loved it um, and he did a probably 15 minute speech he went from the beginning of how the government played a role to how the people played a role I mean, he had eyeballs on his board I mean he really made it come alive Mm -hmm. And it was probably one of the neatest things I had ever seen, and I was like, this is it. This is exactly what I was going for, was for you guys to feel it, for you guys to experience it and say, hey, look, this is wrong, and this is how we fix it. Because I always make them say, okay, well, what are the effects? How did it affect them after the fact? 
Yeah, don't you feel like when you see a student doing that, putting their own spin on it, you get, yeah, he got it. In the back of the room, I'm like doing a happy dance <laughs> because it, it, it works. And, and as much as people think that teenagers don't care about stuff, because we all know teenagers can be cranky, I deal with them five days a week. Um, but they they care. They mm -hmm. care. They have empathy. They they see it from a different perspective than we do. And when they bring in their own opinion or their own perspectives, it makes us just happy. I'm <laughs> so glad to hear that word empathy out of you because that's something that people glass over in the education and but it's sorely needed, you mm -hmm. know, because yeah. the interaction especially and that's it, you know, there's one thing to speak about technology, but that's one of the dangers in technology. Mm -hmm. People st are starting to get, I guess the word is numb. Yes. And empathy yeah. is something that I think we all need to work on and, and everyone's lives because it's just not, oh, look what he put on Snapchat. Well, yeah. no, yeah. no. <laughs> it's, it goes much deeper. Well, that's what that. I like about they have to get up and present yeah. and right. do public speaking because mm -hmm. everybody is into let's text everybody. Yeah. You don't see anybody face to face. You're not actually speaking words. Right, right. And that's the greatest thing about being face to face with somebody. You can read something mm -hmm. and interpret it in many different ways, but by listening to how the person says it, you know where they're coming from and you see. Were they angry when they said it? Were they happy when they said it? Were they joking around? Right. You don't. You can't always get that on a piece of paper. Right. There's a different context yes. to the way people speak as opposed to the typing. And I find it important. I mean, and again, you're going to have to take a public speaking class in college. You're going to have to talk to human beings. You can't just text your boss and tell your boss, hey, I finished the job. Like, you have to interact with people. And so I told my students, especially my freshmen when they walk in, I tell them, you're going to talk two times this year. You talk in the first semester, you're going to talk in the second semester. So by the time you get to the second semester, you should be prepared. Mm. And because I have a lot of kids that are terrified of public speaking. Oh, sure. They are scared to death because they've had that computer or they just don't feel comfortable talking to people. So I start off with, when we talk about the Industrial Revolution, I have them do a commercial. So I have them pick a mm. um, specific invention and I make them make a commercial. And they use this thing called Screencastify. So it's oh, yeah. them facing their computer and they can do it and I mean, I've had some wonderful commercials come out of kids that don't speak a word in my classroom. So I think it's helped them and the more that we can get them comfortable in the classroom with talking, the better off they are by the time they hit senior year and they graduate. Yeah, definitely. So. Cause as Kelly could tell you, as soon as that red light starts blinking on the camera, I get a... <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I was nervous coming in here. <laughs> yeah, oh, you shouldn't now. They no. were, we're all nervous. chill. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Maybe some big fancy digs that were got But what down. a fun way to learn, chill. too. Yeah. You know, is by yeah. making up your own little commercial and things. Because I remember in high school my dad saying, if you could memorize your homework as well as you memorize the commercials no. and the theme songs to TV shows, you'd be a genius. See, I grew up in a sports, kind of like my grandfather raised me on sports. And so that was my thing, was numbers and football and, and all that. So I guess that kind of helped me learn to take the things that these kids are interested in and apply it to the classroom. Absolutely. Because then, you know, I mean, I talk about basketball all the time, and so I reference that using statistics or using whatever uh, to get them like, oh, hey, wow, this is awesome. So, so what, what, what is the, and don't have mention names, but I, um, what was the one presentation from a student that you just sat back there saying, wow? So your wow sure. moment That's as a, a teacher. Oh, I, yeah. It sounds like you got a bunch of great I, students. I know. So yeah. It's got to be I was tough. I going to say you um, probably couldn't pick one. I had I had a um, a student in this. It was a separate presentation, but she actually created a book about her Holocaust. So she did her exhibit, mm -hmm. but then she created her own personal, like in a sense, diary of the experiences of these people and she was taking um, letters and she was taking information from these people that seen it firsthand and she wrote it as if it was a diary wow. and it kind of took my breath away to read the stories and mm -hmm. for her to put that much time that much effort into it I mean she didn't have to she could have done the bare minimum and said okay I'm done but she went above and beyond and it was just like wow I still have the book it's cool. in my classroom and I show it to my kids when we get to talking about Genocide. When we talk about the Holocaust, when we talk about all that stuff, we we I showed. Yeah. So those are the moments that you think, 
oh wow, this is worth it. This yeah. is I've made an impact on someone's yes. life that puts in the effort to create work like this. That's yeah, that those are the treasured moments. Yes. Like the other day we did um, I teach early America, it's a dual credit class. We start with the colonies and all that. And I um, we were talking about the Salem witch trials. And I went through every student and I told them, I said, you're either a witch or you're not a witch. And I told everybody no. And they didn't know I told everybody no. And I told them, I said, all right, now you have to get up and now you have to create the largest group without a witch. There's, there's a witch in here somewhere. You just don't know who it is. And so they had to go and they had to have conversations with each other. And again, that goes back to the whole speaking to mm -hmm. each other. Um, and they're like, I don't know if I trust what you're saying. I don't know if I trust what you're saying. And they were literally going back and forth. And at one point, I had two groups in the back and a very small group of boys in the front. Mm -hmm. And the boys looked at the girls and they said, I don't know that I can trust you. Because they knew in their minds with the Salem Witch Trials, the vast majority were women. Yeah. And so they were like, well, they're girls, so they have to be witches. So I sat them all down and I said, okay, tell me who's a witch. Raise your hand if you're a witch. Not one person raised their hand and they looked at me and they were like, no, this is wrong. You lie. You lie. You lie. I said, was anybody You're really a witch? witch? <laughs> you were lying. Yeah. Was anybody <laughs> really a witch in the Salem Witch Trials? No. They were accused of it. I said, That's you right. believed right. what I said because you thought that there was a consequence if you didn't find that witch. Yeah. It's interesting because I just saw a documentary on that recently. In fact, I think we were watching it together where just because a woman went out into the woods to collect something uh, from nature, they classified that person as a witch. Mm -hmm. And so it's or like... Or you just happen to live next door to a farm where the animals get sick and die. Well, it's obviously your fault. <laughs> you know, so all I can my imagine, cattle got sick at GQ. The women back then probably were afraid to come out of the cabins or whatever mm -hmm. and because, gosh, what am I going to do that's going to classify me as a witch? Right, sure. right. So, gosh, man, what a dark time mm -hmm. in our it history. Well, there's definitely been some interesting times in history. And being a world history teacher, you get to tell it all. Yeah. How many so. of your students thought witches were burned at the stake in America? All of them. All of them? Mm -hmm. Yep. All of them. Because they've seen enough movies. Mm -hmm. But how many were? Nah. Not a one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not in America. They used some really They weird did in methods. Europe and yeah. stuff. But oh, yeah. Europe did some horrible things uh, yeah. back in the day, when, oh. especially with the. Well, then, I think in America they did a lot of the, the drowning the things drowning, and yes. stuff. Yeah. And when I if you float, right? Then or sorry, if you my sink, fault. <laughs> if, if you floated, oh, you're a witch. You yeah. have to be drowned anyway. That's right. But if you die, Oops. then you weren't a witch, and right. oh well. But you're dead now anyway. So it's like who <laughs> thinks of that stuff? <laughs> I know. Like those oh, silly Puritans. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that man, this is great. Um, man, I uh, to hear about that and just the exposure you're giving these guys that take them through group dynamics mm -hmm. so they have to talk and you know, figure out what dynamics within the group classify person and then mm -hmm. they think oh my gosh what was this what they were doing mm -hmm. coming up with the early uh, isolationism of people a particular person that maybe didn't belong in the group mm -hmm. because they were slightly different uh, and that is the beginning and during World uh, War II, when the you know Japanese Americans were put okay, into yeah, you know camps. work camps and things like that, and but it's also relevant to today because Absolutely. people do it today. They sure. look at you and you might have an extra eyelash, and they think you're weird. And you know, so it's like again, it's teaching. Don't believe everything everybody has to say. Mm -hmm. Go and do the research for yourself. Yeah, and yeah. just because somebody looks different doesn't Does make them different. Right. You know, I mean. Right. And the thing about it is today, you have to look back at, you know, the Chinese were isolated, the mm -hmm. Japanese were isolated during World War II, uh, Irish were definitely <laughs> discriminated oh, against, sure, yes. and, you know, and, and this is something else that, you know, I look back at my family history, there were, um, you know, there were health issues within the Irish that were predominant, like seizures mm -hmm. and epilepsy in the Irish, and they thought, oh, he's just drunk, you know, they'd find this guy right. laying around, and so, uh, boy. Okay. Um, but you look now, some of these people are running large, you know, the, that ethnic group is running large corporations, mm -hmm. but, you know, just think how they were, the, the amount of prejudice that they, mm -hmm. they had against them, so. Um, that right. stuff is still evident today. Absolutely. Just, it is mind-boggling how people can be so mean to each other. Right. Now, when you do these presentations, when the kids have to come up with all their things and it's mm -hmm. the day that they're all just like, is it open to the public? I mean, can yeah, people yeah. come and see? Um, I've been trying 
for a while to get a night where I can get parents to come in and listen. We did a Living Wax Museum one time where um, oh, and we did it those. during yeah we did those it during so open house. So all these parents were stopping at these kids and pressing their hand until they were talking and stuff. And I'd love to do that again. Yes. Um, but yeah. I'm, but then I'm you can like the average Joe Blow like me come and see these cool things that these people have worked if so hard on. If it's a night after school, yes. Um, otherwise, I think we require like 24 hours notice before. No, but I mean you should have a night where yeah, it's no, open I, where the public can come and see I all totally this cool agree. stuff. These and kids are working so hard, yeah. and it would be so educational because even. People my age, because I'm old, um, you know, they they want to come and see this. I mean, they'll yeah. probably learn things that they didn't learn back in the day. I might have to uh, talk to my boss. Please do, one. because we would love to tell people, yes. go over there and see all this cool yes. stuff. Hmm. Talking about your boss, we better start thinking about wrapping things up, or else <laughs> oh, there, yeah, may be a, there may be an administrator that doesn't look at the Bill and Kelly show as such a positive <laughs> <one>. <laughs> Well, we thank you so much well, for coming out and sharing this and letting people know that there are such amazing teachers Aww, out there who you. really care about their Definitely. students and are passionate. And so and uh, these are the people that more. really <laughs> have a way of molding our future. Uh, they're they the do. ones that have the kids. And, and our society has changed so much mm -hmm. in that teachers even have a more of an impact because oh, yes. Both parents are now working, or the one parent is working, and so they don't get to spend time with their kids the way they do. And that teacher, uh, I don't want to scare you, by the way, but it is the adult that they see most of during the day. That's right. And um, you know, so that, that that level of appreciation is definitely weighing heavy on our hearts here at the Bill and Kelly Show. Absolutely, and, uh, we appreciate. So we appreciate very you much. coming on Thank and you. sharing Thank all so this much. neat stuff Thank with you. us, and uh, that's great. So with that, do you want to share anything else with us before we go? Um, I would like to know where you grew up and where you went to school. I was born and raised in Hammond. I'm a product of St. Catherine of Siena, K-8. through eight. And then I went to Morton High School until uh, I graduated in 04. Uh, stuck around here for college, went to Cal College, went to Purdue, got my master's in history. Shout out to Professor Lerner because he's the reason why I do a lot of what I do See, in my See, again, another teacher who... Yeah. I took an undergraduate Holocaust studies class with him, and I, I mean, he didn't teach it from the typical, um, like, you have to timeline this, and you have to, you know, it's all the German side of things. He taught us the Jewish side of things, and, mm -hmm. and how the Jews rebelled, and how they felt, and their experiences, and it caught me, because in high school, all you hear is the timeline, uh -huh. and so you go and you hear something different, you're like, man, and so then when I went back for my graduate, uh, for my uh, master's degree, I took his class more than once, and I'm like, let me learn everything I can learn about this subject, and so I went on, I ended up spending four days in Washington, D.C. at the um, Holocaust Museum, Museum there, yeah. with the Balfour Conference, spent days there, went back, I just took my daughter and her class trip back there, and they kind of huddled around me and was listening to everything I had to say to my daughter. They're like, "How do you know so much?" Because <laughs> I'm a teacher. That's yeah, right. That's right. So, have I'm you taken your kids up to the one here in Chicago? Yet. I'm not working yet. on getting really a cool. Saturday, oh, um, a Saturday yeah. field trip to go. Yeah. I tell you what, it. Kelly and I went up there recently, yeah. and it it's it's an amazing facility, mm -hmm. but it also makes you sick. There, you get so much granular detail about what when happened and the tipping points that, you know, and, and that is not shared in history books necessarily. And um, even oh, more right. so if you go to Europe and you actually go to the yeah. places yeah. where they were back. And there's one I've thing we're going to have to go back and see. That's the um, virtual Holocaust oh, yes. survivor yes. exhibit. That's yes. something that we weren't we able to get see. into, and we've got to get back in. I've had the privilege of meeting three Holocaust survivors. I met Eva Kor. Right. Um, I met another man oh, in D.C. named Henry Greenbaum, and he was able to sit and actually tell us his story, and I cried. And I, it was, uh, it's, when you go to the Holocaust Museum in D.C., they give you those little um, cards to open yes. up and read. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting his card. Oh, my gosh. And um, we had, I had, uh, not too long after that, I had taken my class, and we all sat down, and we watched a webinar where they were um, doing Holocaust survivor stories. And the kids were asking questions, so we were typing the questions in, and they were answering our questions. Oh, they answered a couple of our really questions. Cool. It was neat. Um, but yeah, no, I. Yeah. Well, thanks for being an awesome yes. teacher. Thank, thank you. you. Thank I you. And thank you for enlightening the 
the group of students that you yes. work with because uh, it's much needed. Mm -hmm. And thank you for being a teacher. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and close out the show. And again, we want to thank the Executive Suites too for making this the Bill and Kelly Show Studio A possible. And uh, we're mm -hmm. so appreciative of it. And, and this. Uh, uh, we'll speak about it on another show sometime yeah, about shows coming the up, uh, imagery that this roadway behind us has for the Bill and Kelly show because it's huge. So with that, we'll close out the show and say Thanks goodbye everybody. for now. Bye. Bye. This episode of the Bill and Kelly show is brought to you by... For over 28 years, Creative Carpet and Flooring has provided not only one of the largest selections of carpet and flooring in the area, but also customer service that exceeds expectations. Featuring leading brands like Mohawk, Stanton, and Shaw, their friendly and knowledgeable staff is there to help you choose the products that are right for you and are available to help answer any questions along the way. Once you become a client, you'll get newsletters recognizing new customers, offering contests, sales, and special thank you incentives for referrals. Creative Carpet and Flooring, with locations in Mokina, Illinois and Highland, Indiana. A family-owned business providing great products and service to families like yours.